value free. You'll get the entire Edgemaster painting system and six rollers of $40 value, all for just $19.99. Here's how to order. To order Edgemaster, call 1-800-408-9889. That's 1-800-408-9889. So call and order today. This is CNN. Good evening, everyone. America's markets reopened for trading today. The sell-off today was swift and it was severe. The market's falling, in fact, to the lowest level since 1998. The Dow suffered its worst one-point loss ever today. It is now 24% below its all-time high, that making it an official bear market, defined as any market dropping from 20% or more. Overall, the market's losing today almost $600 billion of market value. Today's sell-off coming despite a half-point interest rate cut by the Federal Reserve. The Fed funds rate is now at its lowest point in nine years. The discount rate at a level not seen since 1962. The discount rate at two and a half percent. Still, the markets were open and that the principal goal of this day and a tribute to the thousands of men and women who worked diligently for days to restore phones, computers, water and power to lower Manhattan, to Wall Street and specifically the New York Stock Exchange. A tribute to the American spirit, if you will, as several leaders told me on Wall Street this morning. Everyone coming together and uh, demonstrating America's resiliency. Took a, uh, uh, an attack right at the financial capital of America and the world and we're back. We've united as Americans to send a message to the world. America's back in business, and if you bet against America, you're dead wrong. For more on the markets now, we turn to Christine Romans, who worked throughout the morning, uh, my uh, teammate for several hours this morning, in fact, down there, uh, staying throughout the day on what uh, was a historic session. Christine. Lou, it was a fierce sell-off on Wall Street. It was record volume, folks trying to make up for four days of shut markets here. 2.4 billion shares changing hands here today. And it was with heavy hearts and grim expressions that they sold these stocks down 684 points, the biggest point drop ever, down about 7%. Dow Transport's down about 15%. Really, anything having to do with airlines got hit today. When you look at the Dow losers, you can see that in spades. United Technologies down sharply. Warning on its fourth quarter, saying it could be 30 cents below views because of disruptions in the airline industries. Its Pratt & Whitney unit makes aircraft engines. Boeing, orders for airliners expected to slip. That stock down about seven points. GM, 3M, and Honeywell also lower here. American Express, insurance companies, financial companies all getting hit as well. American Express actually warning after the bell, saying that terrorist attacks will hurt travel and consumer spending in the third quarter. We've got Microsoft, Home Depot, Disney, GE, all sharply lower. GE, in fact, the most actively traded stock here. It has already warned on its third quarter because of the New York terror attacks. Defensive stocks were the real winners here. General Dynamics, Northrop Grumman. Northrop Grumman up 12 points. Look at Raytheon up more than six. It was on the most active list. That's 26% gain for Raytheon. A lot of talk about prospects of increased military spending. It's a group that traders on the floor and some analysts, Lou, are saying could continue to see advances in coming days. Lou. Uh, and Christine, uh, as uh, we pointed out, the most severe point loss ever for the Dow, but in point of fact, in percentage terms, not making uh, the top 10 worst uh, percentage declines not in history. All. Okay, Christine, thank you, Christine Romans. Well, the NASDAQ today plunged 115 points, no record in that performance either in terms of uh, percentage loss or point loss. Uh, Greg Clarkin has the story from the NASDAQ market site for us. Greg? And Lou, it was a day when one week ago what was considered routine and kind of taken for granted today seemed extraordinary to many people. The market's getting back up and running. And yes, the NASDAQ did sell off. It was down 115 points. That doesn't even rank in the top 10 in terms of point loss. It was down 6.8%. Again, not even in the top 10. 2.2 billion shares traded, not even close to top 10 in terms of volume. Now, the composite did finish at the lowest level since October of 1998. What we saw were a lot of the big cap technology stocks selling off today. If you take a look at a sampling of some of those, you'll see across the board weakness. And the travel stocks also sharply lower. Northwest Airlines, Sky West, both losing about a third of their value. The online travel-related operations, Travelocity, Priceline.com, also suffering greatly. We did see a pop in some of the technology companies that specialize in various security 
maturity areas, those did very nicely. Now let's take a look at those big caps, give you a sense of where they finished the day. We did see Intel, Cisco, Oracle, and Dell all posting losses on the day. Cisco Systems, in its case, it came back a little bit with just a 47 cent loss. So again, Lou, the uh, composite sits now at the lowest level since October of 1998, but it was one of those days where triple digit loss really didn't phase a lot of folks. They were just really pleased to get back to the routine, and they didn't see a lot of those waves of selling that some folks expected after that initial wave. Lou? And Greg, as you say, a, a, a severe point uh, loss on the day, but uh, in point of fact, orderly, uh, the session orderly through, uh, throughout, uh, and not to, certainly in the terms of the NASDAQ registering in the top 10, so that's something to be grateful for in addition to the fact that the markets themselves opened today. Exactly. Well, if you could just point out, technically the NASDAQ held up very nicely. The system never appeared to be taxed, and things were incredibly orderly. Okay, and of course, I think it's also fair to point out the NASDAQ has suffered far greater declines than, uh, than the New York Stock Exchange uh, composite or, or the Dow Jones or S&P 500 over the course of the past uh, year and a half as well. Greg, thank you very much. Greg Clark and at the NASDAQ uh, market site. This is, without question, uh, a day that uh, was anticipated uh, with, uh, with some considerable anxiety. The open this morning in question, uh, frankly, leading into the end of last week, and some skepticism about whether these markets would open. Hillary Lane reports on what turned out to be a triumphant session. Flags in their hands, masks over their mouths, emptiness in their hearts. Workers make their way back to a very different Wall Street, arriving to hear that the Federal Reserve had moved to bolster confidence. 21 minutes after the hour, the Federal Reserve just hitting the wires here, uh, announcing that they are cutting interest rates by 50 basis points. Five minutes before the start of trading at the New York Stock Exchange comes the call to action. Today, America goes back to business. But at the 9.30 open, no rush to start trading. Instead, two minutes of silence. It was very emotional um, when they sang God Bless America. Uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the trading room. The open, according to one trader, plays out like a script. Within minutes, the Dow has lost 130 points, the Nasdaq 108. Then as each of the major components opens, the Dow slide worsens. Less than an hour into the session, down 629 points. Dozens of companies begin to buy back shares. At 11 a.m., Maryland President Stanley O'Neill walks among some of his relocated 9,000 employees. We're actually seeing more uh, buying orders uh, coming into the market, uh, starting to give a little bit of uh, uh, balance to the market. 25,000 at 135. Before noon, the Nasdaq attempts a rally, but slips back. By midday, the markets remained near their lows. Traders said movement was so volatile that even the most seasoned investors didn't know what to expect. 1.24 p.m., the White House holds a news conference, and the markets resume their slide. Traders say because there's nothing new to build confidence. Just before 3 p.m., the Dow was off 720, the Nasdaq 114, and neither moves much from there. The heaviest volume ever at the New York Exchange, and the heaviest hearts. Hillary Lane for CNN Financial News, New York. If history is any indicator, today's losses will indeed be short-term. This is how the markets have reacted historically after other traumatic events. In 1915, the British ship Lusitania torpedoed. A short time later, the United States entered World War I. The Dow fell more than 4% after one day, off more than 7% after a week. But after five years, the Dow had gained 43%. Following the bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941, the Dow lost 3%, losing 5% after a week. Five years later, it was almost 50% higher. The Dow dropped 2% after Iraq invaded Kuwait in 1990, nearly 4% lower after a week. Five years later, the Dow had risen 63%. And after the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center, the Dow was down half a percent. A week later, it was a percent lower, and after five years, the Dow had grown in history's most impressive bull market, 152%. So where do the markets go from here? We're going to turn to John Manley of Solomon Smith Barney and Roger McNamee of Intercol uh, Capital Partners uh, to give us at least their views. Uh, and John, if I may, let me start with you. Uh, this sell-off today anticipated, if you will, 
What did you make of the day's session? It was orderly. Uh, it was never out of control. I think they were, they were able to match up buyers and sellers. And I think the market is pricing in the unthinkable, which is what it's had to do for the last several days. And Roger, the, uh, the NASDAQ held up well. The technology stocks uh, that have been severely beaten, I certainly don't have to uh, point that out to you. Uh, what do you make of the performance there? Lou, I was actually incredibly impressed by how well the systems work today. And frankly, the whole thing turned out pretty much as the script would have suggested. Had the market closed for four days, clearly there had been a lot of bad news and clearly the economy was affected, so stock prices were going to be lower. But the fact that you could have record volume in the New York without a problem, that you could have a bad day on NASDAQ and have it you know, not be in the top ten of history, not even the worst day of the year, I think speaks volumes about how appropriate your positive long-term attitude really is here. Okay. John, I, the, as you say, the markets were orderly. What can we anticipate from here? I think you're going to see a lot more volatility. To, you know, I don't think anyone can say this was it, that it's over now. In fact, I can't give you any reason to say you have to buy it tomorrow morning on the opening, which is exactly what the market's pricing in right now. It's the short-term concerns that I think keep, keep people from buying into what, as you pointed out historically, has been a reason to buy longer term. We have talked uh, on Wall Street and uh, certainly uh, investors concerned about uh, what came to be known in the year 2000, uh, the end of 2000 and 2001, the lack of visibility. Uh, certainly visibility, it seems to me, has not been improved here, has it? It's been made worse. There's no question the consumer will be weaker, the economy will, will be weaker on a short-term basis. But then again, there are reasons for that the market can point to as being one time in nature. Uh, Roger? Uh, visibility here, technology, it was absent before, what is it now? Well, actually, I think, Lou, you can see that the September quarter, which was already a write-off, is clearly going to be worse, and I suspect December and perhaps March will be difficult as well. I think the good news comes in that the country is being given something to focus on, and we're going to rebuild New York, we're going to rebuild the Pentagon, and I think, quite candidly, we're going to rebuild the national spirit in a really constructive way. So I expect a much sharper upturn when things finally do turn. So that, you know, on a five-year outlook basis, I think the market's going to be great. But I agree completely with John. The next few months are anybody's guess. But candidly, with stock prices at these levels, I'm not sure I'm as worried about it as I was, say, six months ago. Interesting. And uh, with just a few seconds left here, Roger, let me ask you this. Your advice to investors, a lot of talk here about uh, patriotic buying of stock. Your thoughts? I, I just don't think that's appropriate. I think people have to look at their own situation. But the United States economy is very strong, and technology will lead it when it recovers. John? The market will take care of itself, as the, as the country will take care of itself. Uh, we need, I think, people to concentrate on other things, but realize there's a lot of potential and there's a lot of resilience in America. John, John Manley, Roger Magamy, thank you both for being here. Well, before the markets opened, the Fed cut uh, the discount rate and the Fed funds rate by uh, 50 basis points, and that half, uh, that half point uh, interest rate reduction certainly welcome, but its impact uh, uh, not, uh, not easily assessed. And the European Central Bank also cutting rates. In fact, a great deal of coordination among central banks uh, all around the world. And Tim O'Brien has that part of the story from Washington. In lowering the federal funds rate from 3.5 to 3 percent, the Fed said even before the tragic events of last week, employment, production, and business spending remained weak, and last week's events have the potential to damp spending further. Frankly, I think it should have announced the cut last Friday. I think that would have uh, been somewhat of a psychological boost to investors over the weekend. The Fed may have been less concerned about market fluctuations than with the system's performance in light of Tuesday's attacks. It said it will continue to supply unusually large volumes of liquidity to the financial markets as needed until more normal market functioning is restored. I think at this point they're really concerned, no matter what the market does, that there's adequate liquidity so that all of the trades can settle, so that people can trade out of their positions and uh, make whatever transactions are necessary and to some an even broader message. I think what's important right now is the message coming from the Fed is we know that we are facing a very uncertain situation. We're going to do what it takes. And I think that has the ability to change the thinking, the thought process, help to bolster confidence in the U.S. economy. President Bush, speaking at the Pentagon, said the underpinnings for economic growth are everywhere, even in New York. And after all, the Congress, uh, in a bipartisan fashion, overwhelmingly passed a, a supplemental 
of uh, billions of dollars, which will uh, help not only uh, get New York City up and running again, but will help provide some uh, economic stimulus. It all costs money, of course, to pay for it. The White House and Congress appear to have tacitly agreed.